Ignatian meditation. Here we go. All right, so we just chatted about St. Ignatius of Loyola and his life, and so now let's look into his prayer method that he developed. So as I mentioned in the last video, this prayer method was already in the Catholic Church in some capacity, but St. Ignatius takes it and makes it explode into something bigger and better. So the premise of this is that God can use our imaginations to help us pray. He can use our imaginations to speak to us. Similar to how Lexio Divina can take a word and then use that, God can use it as a launching point to get us deeper into prayer and deeper into conversation with him. With St. Ignatius's method, we use our imagination to encounter God and then God takes it from there. So for this, uh, you want to use different gospel stories. The gospels are the best part of the Bible to use with this type of prayer. With Lexio Divina, you could use any part of the Bible because any word could be something that God could use to help you pray. But with this particular prayer method, because it involves the imagination, you want books that are more story-based and story-based around Jesus, which are the gospels. So you want to use the Gospels for this form of prayer. So the basic method of this prayer and the goal of this prayer is to set up the story in your mind, read the story, set it up in your mind, play through it, interact with it, and then find Jesus in the story. And then similar to Lexio Divina, you are going to encounter Jesus and share with him what your imagination brings up for you. All right, so let's walk through the steps now one by one. So step one is how we begin all prayer with the sign of the cross, right? You begin with the sign of the cross and then you actually invite God in. This takes 30 seconds or less. It's really short. It's basically calming your mind down and getting your mind focused in prayer. If you watched my video on the prayer basics before you pray, one of the things that you want to do is calm down your mental space. And so that's this step. The, the inviting God in is the first step that we're going to make to calm our mind down so that way our imagination can be more fruitful. So now step two is our preparatory prayer. So now we enter into 30 seconds to a minute of just sharing with God what we hope to get out of this prayer time. Again, it's about calming your imagination down. It's about calming the distractions down in your mind. It's getting yourself focused on what am I doing here? Why am I doing this? I'm trying to encounter the living God. You're going to offer God all the fruits of this prayer time. You're going to offer him all of your actions. You're going to ask for any specific graces that you want, whether you want peace, you want consolation, you want to pass your test that Miss Emma's going to give you in a week. Um, you want to get along better with your brother or sister. You miss your friends. Like whatever your intention is, this is the time that you bring it up. So that's step two, preparatory prayer. Step three, you're going to crack open your Bible at this point, and you're going to start reading. So again, one of the gospel stories, you want to go to a predetermined passage. You don't want to play what I like to call Bible bingo. It's like open up the scriptures and be like, oh, that's the what Jesus has for me. No, you want to go to a predetermined passage. The best way to do this is to use the Sunday reading, the Sunday gospel reading. That's the best way. If you don't know how to start reading the Bible, use the Sunday gospel reading. Another way that you can do it is you can just start a gospel in the beginning and then move through it story by story and then just pick up where you leave off if this becomes your regular type of prayer. You crack open your Bible and then you're going to go through this step by step. So now this step three I'm going to break down into little steps. So part, um, part A, you're going to read the text slowly, not as slowly as Lexio Divina, but you're going to read it slowly. You're going to try and remember what the story is about and get the gist of the story and then start to let it come a mind, alive in your mind. So step B, you're going to place then once you've read the story and you have the story ready to go in your mind, you know what it's about and you know who the main characters of you are, you're going to place yourself in the story using your imagination. And you're going to become one of the characters. So ask yourself, you ask yourself at this point, which character are you? 
Are you an apostle? Are you a bystander? Are you someone that's getting healed? Are you someone else that Jesus is talking to? Um, who are you? And then part C, you're going to start participating in the dynamics of the scene. Uh, what I like to recommend to people is don't just float above it, kind of like a movie camera that's panning over a scene. You don't want to do that. You want to be the camera. You want to be the one that's focusing and seeing everything that's going on. Um, so don't just float above watching everything happen in front of you. Be an active participant in the scene. Be your character. To start moving around, start interacting with the different people in the scene. And the beautiful thing is, is that this is now in the realm of your imagination. The gospel has served its purpose. It's set up the scene. And now we are actually free to imagine whatever we want, even if it's not quite written in scripture. Go ahead and add your own little details at this point. Go ahead and add some lines. Go ahead and say different things. Go ahead and do different things. See what happens. This is your imagination. And because you're entering into it with God in prayer, I've already invited God into this. God's walking alongside me and he's guiding my imagination. So part D then is you're going to start observing your surroundings. And this is where you can really let your imagination go wild. You start engaging your five senses. What do you see? Are you in a city? Are you in a field? Or is it... Uh, is it nighttime? Is it daytime? Is it in the evening? Are you inside? Are you outside? Are you in a marketplace? Are you in someone's house? What does that house look like? Is it Does it have mud and plaster walls or is it made of stone or is it made of uh, wooden slabs? Start imagining, is there a carpet on the floor? Is it a stone floor? Is it a dirt floor? Um, you know, what are you wearing? What do you smell? Do you smell uh, the, the street smell of the marketplace? Do you smell some warm, fresh bread that Martha's baking over there and you're Mary sitting at the foot of Jesus? Like, Imagine the story. Engage your senses. Let your mind run wild and make it as real as possible. And this serves a very particular purpose. The more real you make it for yourself, the more you engage your imagination, the less distractions are going to bombard you because your mind is so engaged with the story. So this is a really important step. Don't just dismiss it and be like, okay, I've got enough here. Really immerse yourself in this. So what do you hear? What do you see? What do you smell? What does everything feel like? All of these things. So now once you have the scene set up, you have your character, you have your um, scene set up, you have uh, the story going through your mind. Now we get into some of the more fun bits. So part E, you're going to enter into dialogue now. You're going to go around to the different characters that are you're surrounded by. Maybe it is just you and Jesus, and that makes it easy. Uh, but maybe there are other characters there. Go start talking to them. What do they have to say? What's that bystander standing next to you in the crowd? What are they thinking about when they see everything playing on in front of you? Oh, what about James over there? What about the Apostle Peter? You know, what about the little kid that Jesus is holding on his lap? You know, all these different things, all these different people for you to interact with. Go, interact with them and let your imagination, again, just kind of run wild. So then enter into dialogue. And then pay attention to what they're saying to you and what you're asking them. Are they asking things of you? Are they saying things to you? Um, what is their tone of voice? What are they trying to say? What are they trying to convey? So once you've started to interact with some of the people, now, part F, you're going to want to pay particular attention to Jesus. Go find Jesus now. And what is he saying? What is he doing? Is he doing it to you or is he doing it to someone else? Is he saying it to you? Is he saying it to someone else? What's the expression on his face? What's the look in his eyes? What is his posture? Is he walking? Is he sitting? Is he standing? Does he have his arms crossed? Is he kind of like lounging against a wall? Is he staring at someone, gazing at someone deeply? Is he upset? Is he annoyed? Is he frustrated? Is he happy? Is he sad? What emotion do you sense in Jesus at this time? So now, as you start to encounter Jesus, as you start to pay attention to Jesus, 
This is where the next part comes in, part G. Notice now what's going on inside of you. Identify any emotions that you're feeling, spiritual movements. Do you feel happy? Do you feel sad? Do you feel joy and sorrow? Do you feel peace? Do you feel confusion? Do you feel frustration? Do you feel anger? Do you feel disappointment? Uh, do you feel hope? Do you feel hopeless? Like, what are you feeling? So again, this kind of goes back to what I mentioned in Lexio Divina, and the same rule applies here. Pay attention to your thoughts, your feelings, and your desires. And once you've started to identify them, you move on to part H. Now you enter into conversation with Jesus. And this is what the whole prayer has been leading up to, so that you could have a conversation with Jesus. So tell Jesus what you are thinking, feeling, desiring, experiencing, does he have anything to say to you? Have a genuine heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Don't sugarcoat anything. Don't downplay anything. Be open. Be honest. And then talk about your thoughts, your feelings, and your desires and let him speak to you. And just let that exchange carry on for as long as you want it to. Once you feel done... Like you feel like Jesus has said everything that he needs to say. You've said everything that you've needed to say. Then you just move into a closing prayer. It's very simple. You end with an Our Father, a Hail Mary, a Glory Be, whatever your favorite prayer is. Again, like we did in Lexio Divina, thanking God for all the graces and everything that he's done for you in this prayer time. Again, even if you didn't feel it, you still thank God because he was still working. So you say a closing prayer. That's part four, step four. Now step five, once you're done with the closing prayer, this step is really important. This is the processing step. So you want to get everything that happened in your head and you want to get it out. And this can happen a couple of different ways. You have a prayer journal. You just write it down, just a couple of sentences. What did Jesus say to me? What did I say to Jesus? What did this prayer move or do in me? Um, what stood out to me in this prayer? You could have a prayer journal. You could share it with a family member, share it with your parents, share it with your kids, share it with um, your siblings, share it with your friends, your classmates, share it with Miss M. You know, talk about it. Get it out of just being in the realm of your imagination and make it concrete existing in the world. So that's the final step of this process. So now, in the next video, we will be talking, we will be not talking, well, we will be talking, but we will be walking through, we'll invite Miss M and Sam back, and we will walk you through an Ignatian meditation, step by step. See you then.